and, and let me add one more thing if yeah, I can. Please. If you're an insurance agent, hear me closely. Mm-hmm. This is an opportunity of a lifetime, right? Yes. Yeah. In that you're in a position to potentially get free money that you don't have to pay back. Hey, this is Vlad from the Insurance Sales Lab. And with me today, I have AJ. He's the president of Hillcrest Tax Planners. And today we're going to cover a very important topic that specifically pertains to insurance agents. We're going to talk about how the PPP program uh, can help insurance agents uh, during these times. So uh, AJ, thanks so much for jumping on this call today. Absolutely, Vlad, thank you so much for, for having me. Absolutely, first things first, if you're an insurance agency owner and you have not applied for the PPP, which strongly highly suggest that you uh, apply for it. Uh, what is that's designed to do is really four things, is to give people, uh, you know, business owner support for your payroll, which is something you're paying already. Um, your uh, utilities, uh, which is something you're paying already. If you actually own your building and you're paying mortgage interest, that they're doing, they're, they're gonna pay that for as well, as well as your rent. Uh, that's something that you have to pay for uh, as well. So that's a beautiful thing because they're giving you a two and a half times multiple um, to really be able to cover that. And that also includes uh, owner's uh, compensation as well. Great. I had an agent who called me not long ago and he said, Vlad, my, and I told him to apply. And he's like, well, I haven't really been financially burdened. Uh, my staff is still here. They're still working. We're writing more business. We have been writing more business through March, April, May, and now in the month of June. So he's like, I don't know if I should apply. And I said, apply because uh, it, I don't want to call it free money because there are terms that you sure. have to uh, fit. But if you do things, if you if you get the funds and you disperse them correctly, you can get the entire loan forgiven. Let me repeat right. that. You can get the entire loan forgiven. So um, he later applied and got approved very quickly, had $30,000 deposited, deposited into his account, calls me up and says, Okay, now what? How do I make sure that this thirty thousand dollars gets fully forgiven? So, sure. a lot has changed over the last few months as far as um, the eight weeks, twenty-four weeks. I don't really want to dive into the old terms. I want to discuss the new terms. What do agents have to do to make sure that one hundred percent of the money that's given to them is fully forgiven? What do agents have to do? Absolutely. So the first thing I would recommend doing is getting with some uh, a firm or an individual who really understands the process, right? Uh, you know, something that's really interesting is that a lot of our colleagues in the tax and accounting industry, which is really interesting, really are kind of sitting on the sidelines right now and really are kind of with their heads down, not really helping a lot of business clients really kind of navigate through this and business owners kind of left to kind of figure things out for themselves, right? Which is... Um, not the best position to be in if you really don't have the, the time or the, the know-how to really understand that. So right now there's 11 page application that people need to fill out to be able to do it. And in, in short, what I would recommend, now again, reach out to a professional, but if you're one of those do-it-yourselfers, uh, the thing that I would recommend is that you separate the accounts. I wouldn't have uh, PPP funds deposited into your operating account. It have it be a separate account with either, maybe even a different bank so there's no confusion. And then really make sure that you keep in proper documents, you know, of payroll, uh, of utilities, um, you know, of, of, you know, of interest, you know, of rent. But also you want to make sure that you're doing a pay, um, a PPP forgiveness calculator, right? To really kind of show you on a month by month basis as far as how to break that down. Because if you're a business owner and you're actually paying yourself too much, you can actually have to pay that portion of it back, right? And there's um, limits of 100000 for the year or 8300 for the month that you can pay correct. for yourself as a business owner. Okay. Correct. So if you're paying yourself $10,000, you're going to have to pay the difference back, right? Um, you know, part-time employees, you know, they don't qualify as full-time employees. And what happened was right. some people have actually impl- included that on the first application and... Um, got approved off of those numbers, but those numbers that, that went into that first application is not going to be able, they're going to have to pay that portion of it back for that part-time employee, right? Because so they wrote it out so fast and some of that guidance wasn't wasn't out as full-time employees, not part-time employees. So, so the thing I would recommend is, again, to really get with somebody 
hey man, the uh, to you know to make sure that it you know to get with the body to make sure that you're filling out the form correctly and that you have the proper documents to make sure the majority, if not all, of those funds are forgiven. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say, AJ, is number one, get in touch with someone who understands the terms really well and uh, can calculate the the math for you. So in the case of this agent uh, who got thirty thousand dollars put into his account. He would reach out to someone like yourself or someone who understands this whole process really well. That's step one. Step two is if the funds got dispersed into his Wells Fargo account, which sure. he uses for everything. Uh, what I'm hearing you say is maybe transfer those funds to I maybe definitely transfer definitely. those funds because out of that account as soon as possible. Okay. Really, at that point, you don't know. Those the, the items that are coming out after that point, you don't know if it's PPP money or if you don't know if it was money that was in there previously. Yeah. It's really confusing. Okay. So he takes yeah. that $30,000, puts it into a Chase account, checking account that he doesn't really use for anything. So now it's there. That's the yep. second step. And then what he needs to do is make sure that the money that now comes out of this Chase account, the $30,000, is being put into categories that uh, qualify for the forgiveness component. So Correct. payroll being the biggest one for agents, um, if they put 100% of that money into payroll, um, there is some stipulations like you have to put it into a, a full-time employee, not a part-time employee. Uh, you have to put it into a, uh, a W-2 employee, not a contractor, right? Correct. Correct. Um, if you're paying yourself as the business owner, you have to make sure that you're not paying yourself more than 8300 per month, right? Right. But little details like that, that you have to, or important mm -hmm. details, not little details, mm -hmm. important details mm -hmm. that you have to watch out for. And if you fit that criteria and, um, or if you do those things over the next, say, few months, 90 days, you disperse those $30,000, that $30,000 that was given to you will be completely forgiven. You do not have to pay it back to the government. Is that right? That's a strong possibility based off the application and based off them following to the to, to the guidelines. And the reason I say that, and, you know, it's going to depend because whenever you do the uh, the application, those funds were literally approved based off the information that was uh, provided, you know, at the at the time. Yes. The reason I say that it depends because things can change. Somebody could lose a team member. Yep. Um you know, I mean, something can happen in, in the times to where, you know, just out of your control. So the best thing that I would say is to have a plan um, to really use the, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, a calculator, you know, month in and month out to make sure you're tracking to make sure you have a proper good uh, accounting of the, uh, you know, the funds. I mean, it shouldn't take that long, maybe 30 minutes to an hour for, you know, for one month to really okay. make sure it's done uh, properly. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, so once. Once uh, someone applies and they get the money, say I got the money today, deposited sure. into my account. There's a there's a there's a timeline that starts where I have 24 weeks to mm -hmm. disperse those funds if I want that to be forgiven. Is that right? Correct. And the deadline is what day? Like when is the last day? The last day. The last day that you can apply is June 30th, and the last day to really have everything uh, utilized and, and turned in is December 31st of this year. December 31st. So last day to apply for the PPP is June 30th. The last day to um, disperse the funds and submit your application of where you uh, disperse the funds is. December 31st, last day of the year. Correct. Right. So you have to have an application, which is 11 pages, by the way, yep. 11 pages to make sure that, you know, all if, uh, the majority, if not all of those funds are forgiven. Got it. And uh, for agents that or business owners that applied previously during mm -hmm. the month where the, the funds ran out uh, sure. and they got a notice saying your account or application got denied. Yeah. What can they do? Can they apply again and possibly get approved? Yeah. So what I would do, number one, is call those uh, companies back uh, to see if they can actually reopen that application. A lot of time it's just really from it may be for missing information. It may be because they're not no longer accept, they may no longer be accepting application. You really just want to contact them first to kind of uh, see what's going on. A lot of banks are using uh, artificial intelli intelligence to uh, really kind of um, get through these applications and you actually have some banks that are actually using individuals to look at things one off. So sometimes a small bank is going to be more advantageous than uh, a financial technology company. 
and sometimes a um, a financial technology company may be a little easier to do business with than a small bank. It really just depends on what somebody's needing, and that's why it's important to really um, have relationships with somebody who really understand what banks do what to really make sure they can position you to, uh, to have the you know the highest success at getting your PPP application funded. Great. Uh, yep. We'll go ahead and include your contact information below so uh, agents can. Uh, reach out to you and schedule a call to have a conversation about this uh, so that they can get any additional questions answered. Uh, last thing I have here, there's a, another program that is not the PPP program, but there's an SBA loan program that allows you to uh, borrow money and yeah. then you have 30 years to pay it back at a 3.75% interest rate and the first 12 months uh, the payments are deferred, so you don't have to pay anything yeah. back. Uh, can you give us a quick overview of how that program works and how yeah, it's different yeah. from PPP? Correct. So that program, when it originally rolled out, the IDLE, um, that's the Emergency Disaster Loan, um, that is directly through the Treasury, directly from the SBA. You can't apply for that loan through a bank. You actually have to apply for it on the SBA's website. Okay. They're no longer at this point taking application for business owners, only for agricultural businesses, right? Uh, meat supplies, so cows, you know, things of that nature, people in farming. Um, that loan, like I said, is that the interest rates are 3.75, 30 year terms. I mean, that is huge, 30 year terms. When it originally rolled out, it was up to 2 million, and they quickly realized that there wasn't enough money. To yeah, really yeah. run around, so they reduced it to where the max maximum loan is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. To where again, people don't have to make payments until uh, a year; they're deferred. And then when they, you do make when you when you start making payments, it's uh, spread out over uh, thirty years, no prepayment penalties, and the uh, payments are extremely affordable. Is so that just for farming and agriculture? You said, or can insurance agents also apply? Well, and if you have already applied for it in the past and you haven't got an application right now, you're in queue. I mean, you haven't had an approval right now, you're in queue. The last time that I checked, they shut it out and they may reopen it. But as it, the, the last time I checked was three days ago, it was only open for agriculture businesses. Got it, right? got it, okay. Uh, not, you know, so they may open, open that back up. With these types of programs with the PPP and the, uh, and the IDLE, uh, things literally change daily, by the hour, yeah, yeah. by the week. So, um, you know, if you're an insurance agent, please don't get discouraged. That can completely change tomorrow because it completely changed about a week and a half, two weeks ago. So just know that if you're, you've applied already and you haven't gotten your money, you're in the queue. And if you have not applied, there's still going to be an opportunity for you to apply. They've already, um, the House has already proposed some legislation for them to open that back up to business and actually give more money to that program. So you know, there's going to be changes that's kind of going out through this entire uh, program. I mean, you got payroll tax credits that if you didn't get the PPP that you can take advantage of to where you literally can not have payroll taxes. Um, I don't know if I would recommend that, but um, as far as that deferring those, but you do also have payroll tax credits, which is a little bit easier to kind of manage than deferring payroll taxes. Also in the CARES Act, uh, people have, if you have a government-backed mortgage loan, a lot of people don't know this. You have the uh, the right to ask, and they don't. You don't need to provide any documentation. So they're for mortgage payments for six months, actually up to a year. Is that personal residence or personal residence? Not business. Okay. Personal residence, right? So for those agencies who maybe things are kind of stay the same, maybe they kind of taking a dip, maybe they lost a team member, they need to kind of free up some cash. You know, you have a, uh, a government-backed mortgage. That's something that you can do. So, hey, you know, everybody's been impacted by this virus in one way or the other. Um, and, uh, you know, and if you request that, you know, uh, according to the law, they have to give you a six-month extension. And sometimes they give it to you quarterly. They'll give you three months. And then if you ask for another three months, then you'll give it. And if you ask for another three months, they'll give it. And what you'll see is that... The, Again, I can't speak for all mortgage companies, but the ones that I've talked to were, have been willing to put the uh, the payments that were missed towards the back of the loan. It doesn't affect your credit. Wow. Um, you know, taxes and insurance, they're paying that. They'll just attach that, attach that to the back end of the loan. So if that's something that if you're an agent and you think you could uh, use some benefit for, 
definitely doesn't help to kind of give your uh, lender a call, your mortgage person a call, whoever your home loan is with, to see kind of what your options are. What I'm hearing you say, AJ, is if my mortgage is $2,500 for my personal residence, uh, I can have that that $2,500 a month be tacked on to the back end of the loan and maybe take that $2,500 that I would have put into my personal residence and put that into my business right. to help grow that. Absolutely. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And let me say, let me say that, that when you go into forbearance, that's the proper term for it. Yep. Every bank is different. Some banks may be not willing to do that. They may be, um, maybe willing to let you defer and maybe when you start making payments again, give you slightly a higher mortgage payment to where the difference is paid off over time. Every situation is different. Uh, but I would, I would imagine that if they're going to give somebody an opportunity to defer three months, six months, um, a year, that there are definitely going to be some flexible options to where they can put people in position to be able to make their mortgage payment. So uh, so let's not assume that they're going to put it on the back of the loan. Yeah, but it's a yeah. great chance that they will uh, be able to do that. They're going to be flexible. So it's something that I know I personally, I reached out to and have my mortgage company do that for me. Thank you for clarifying that. I think that's yeah. a good detail to get right. Uh, AJ, I can't thank you enough. I know we covered a lot on this call. Uh, and for everybody who is watching this video, if you're an insurance agent and you have not applied for the PPP, uh, I don't want to call you an irresponsible business owner um, because I'm sure you're a great person, but make sure you reach out to your local bank, reach out to AJ, get your questions answered and apply for the loan. If you follow the terms correctly, you could yeah. possibly get all of that money forgiven. So Absolutely. it's like you saying no to free money if you are declining the even the opportunity of applying for the PPP loan. So let me, add one, more thing. Let me add one more thing if yeah, I can. Please. If you're an insurance agent, hear me closely. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity of a lifetime, right? Yes. Yeah. Meaning that you're in a position to potentially get free money that you don't have to pay back. I'm going to say forgivable money because everybody is not free. Let's just say forgivable. And right. if you do have to pay it back, for some people, a couple thousand dollars over five years, they've extended. It's not two years. You got to pay it back. It's five now. It's not the end of the world. The reason I say that you have an opportunity of a lifetime, if you get that PPP loan, and let's say it's $30,000, that's $30,000 that you didn't have to spend of your own money. That's if you're able to get that all forgiven, that you can uh, use your money to put that into your business. So one of the things that, that's really not being talked about right now is that insurance agency owners are going to be overpaying in taxes, the majority of them. If you're profitable and you've never received a formal tax plan, if, if you're just giving your, 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 your accounting, your QuickBooks to your tax advisor once a year, I guarantee you it's 100% chance you're overpaying in taxes. And why people are going to be on pace to overpay more in taxes, because there's a lot of you guys, life and health, PNC agents, that are doing better now uh, than you were probably pre-COVID-19, uh, which means you're making more money, you're having more profits. Then you got the PPP, that's thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars that if you're using it right, you're growing your agency, which means you're making more money, which means that you're going to have a higher tax bill. So yes. now is the time to put some things in place to where you can. Tax planning is about holding on to more money. Let me give an example: If I had a hundred thousand dollar profit and I'm paying twenty thousand dollars, I got you know. Uh, $80,000 left, or is it better to have $100,000, uh, pay zero in taxes and have $100,000 uh, $100, left? The second one is better. That's tax planning. So if you're an agent and you got the PPP money, you're profitable every year, you definitely got to reach out to a firm that specializes in tax planning so you can keep more of your cash and pay less in taxes. For some of you guys, that can be worth fifty, a hundred thousand dollars in savings every year. That's real tangible that you can invest back into your agency to grow it. You can put it in retirement. Um, you can send your kids to college. You can pay off debt. You can do a lot of things with the tax savings. So I definitely wanted to go ahead and throw that in there, Vlad. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for adding that. This is a different component than what we discussed earlier uh, with the PPP. But um, I'm gonna say something controversial. Some people may or may not like this, but. To illustrate what you just said with tax planning for insurance agents, uh, a company that does this really well is Amazon. Like they pay lo no taxes, zero, no taxes. zero. And uh, I know they have a bunch of uh, exemptions and such, but 
Uh, they have a whole team in place that just focuses on that, that alone. So big businesses do that and insurance agents, small businesses should plan accordingly for the year as well. So um, regardless of what your belief system is and value system as far as uh, taxes and paying taxes, I know as business owners, we're always looking to take as much of a, our hard earned money and put it back into our business or spend it on things that we would like to spend uh, that money on versus paying it to the IRS. So um, that all being said, uh, what are your final thoughts here, AJ, as we wrap up this call? No, uh, final thoughts again, uh, encourage all you know, insurance agency owners, if you haven't applied for the PPP, to, to apply for the PPP. If you've already applied for it and you did get um, you know, approved, definitely come up with a plan to make sure that's forgiven. And then the third thing that I would think about is, um, you know, what you can be doing to grow in your agency during this time, but also putting some things in place where you can actually save money uh, on taxes and really, you know, uh, position yourself to really be able to grow your agency, to build your network, to really be able to put yourself and your family and your team members, which is so important, uh, in position to be able to thrive. And in order to do that, you need resources. In order to have resources, you need planning. In order to have planning, you need strategic partners who specialize in planning to make sure that planning comes to fruition. Yeah, so sure. uh, that's really that's really about it. Well said. Thank you, AJ. Talk to All you right. again soon. Sounds good, bud. Thanks, bud. Yep. Bye.